in the first 11 chapters of Genesis, man, you see uh, many first things that appear. The first man appears, the first woman, the first command from God, the first marriage, the first home. And it goes on to talk about the first sin, the first death, the first sacrifice, the first worship, the first murder, the first curse, and so on. And so in this passage, the Lord gives a glimpse inside the world's first family, Cain and Abel, the sons of Adam and Eve. Let's read our scripture this morning, ESV, Genesis 4, 1 through 13. Now Adam knew his wife Eve and conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. Excuse me. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain a worker of the ground. And so in the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the first of the ground. And Abel also brought, amen, the firstborn of his flock, amen, of their fat portion. And the Lord had regarded for Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry. And his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin crouches, amen, at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother, uh, Abel, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall, give, you shall be a fugitive and wander On the earth, Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is great, greater than I can bear. Let's pray this morning. God, we pray this morning for your Holy Spirit, Lord God, that we would be guided by it, Lord God, that we would be guided by your word, Lord God, and not the way of the world, Lord God, not the way, Lord God, that the world travels, not the way of Cain. We thank you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. And so while there are many great truths in this passage, and so one stands out more than the others, in the life of Cain, we see a portrait of the lost sinner. Amen. Amen. And so this morning, Cain is a model. He is a prototype of every sinner that would follow him into this world. The verse describes the life of Cain perfectly. It also describes the life of all those who live not by faith, but who walk after the flesh. It is a lifestyle the Bible calls the way of Cain. And let's look at the characteristic of an unbelieving heart. And so this chapter begins with a picture of great hope. And so after Adam and Eve sinned in Eden, they were cast out of the beautiful garden by the Lord. And so God placed an angel with a flaming sword at the entrance of Eden to prevent Adam and Eve from returning to the garden, and from eating of the tree of life. They would eat of the tree of life, and they would live forever. Amen. They were to eat of it. Adam and Eve were driven out of the garden. They were forced to seek out a a meager existence by working the ground, amen, for their food. They had everything, and God provided everything. And now they're kicked out of the garden, And they have to provide for themselves. Their lives, which had been so perfect before, they had sin changed in every way. Now their lives are revolving around hard work, drudgery, and boundless regret. They were walking with God at one day. And now they're not walking with God anymore. And so the days of walking with the Lord in the cool of the garden were over. They were consigned to a life of pain, sorrow, toil, and eventually death. And so all hope is gone for them. 
Then the Bible says Adam knew his wife. She conceived, and suddenly there was hope. Suddenly, amen, there was hope for them. There was a, a new hope for a new wonderful life. A new beginning and a new promise for a better tomorrow. So the new life begun. Eve, like many other women, amen, must have been excited about her baby growing in her womb. You can imagine Cain, amen, as he feels the baby kick in her belly. I remember doing this as, as a new father, amen. And so no doubt you can see, amen, the father placing his, hear, his ear on her stomach, listening the ba at the baby's tiny heartbeat inside of her. It was a time of new possibilities, renewed hope and excite, ex exciting expectations. Then one day, amen, it was all over. She gave birth to the firstborn into this world. Eve was the first woman to experience a pain of childbirthing. Amen. She was the first to experience the joy of holding her newborn baby in her arms. And so Eve, amen, named the baby Cain, which means I have gotten. Eve gives God the glory for her new baby. She says, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And so she saw the birth at this time as a divine blessing, amen, in her life. How many of us know that children should be a divine blessing in our lives? Amen. And so it was so for her. Then came another baby, Abel. His name was breath or vapor or perishable. And so the name would be proved prophetic as her second son, amen, was here but for a moment. It was sad because of Adam and Eve's sin and over the loss, amen, of their fellowship with God. And so it is somewhat lessened by their children. Those babies brought, amen, hope into this new world or to the new world, amen, that seemed hopeless. And so babies possess a power, amen. They often bring joy. They bring laughter. They bring hope, amen, for a new tomorrow. And so these crying creatures, they come into this world, amen. And so these two boys grew up together in the same home. They had the same parents. They received the same instructions. They saw the same things, and they shared the same experiences. But as they grew, differences be began to emerge between both these boys. And so when it came to choose a job, they both chose honorable professions. Cain was a, a man, followed his father's footsteps. So he became a farmer. Abel was a shepherd. And so both these were important, amen, profession to help sustain their family. And so at some point, they reached a young adulthood. These young men came before the Lord to worship. And I'm sure their parents trained them how to approach God and how to worship God. You can imagine what kind of evangelists Adam and Eve were. They knew how to walk with God, and they knew how to lose fellowship with God. They were, amen, confronted with their sin. And so God killed an animal and covered them, or covered their sin, or covered their nakedness and their shame with this animal. And so this is, amen, a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. And so Adam and Eve knew this. That God had covered them. And I can imagine they shared this with their sons also. I wonder how many times Adam took his sons on his knees. And he taught them how to worship God. I wonder how many times Eve warned them to listen to the Lord and not to the devil. And so Cain was able, Cain and Abel, amen, come before God to make an offering to him. The Bible says the Lord respected Abel's offering, but for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. And so this word mean, respect means to look upon, to approve, amen. Cain brought the first, I mean, the, sorry, the fruit of the ground, while Abel brought the firstborn of his flocks and their fat portion. 
God approved of Abel's offering, but he rejected Cain. And so I wonder this morning what the difference was. I've heard of all kinds of theories why the offering was accept why one offering was accepted and one was not accepted. Some people say God accepted Abel's offering over Cain's because Abel's offering was a blood sacrifice. God rejected Cain's offering because it was an animal sacrifice. Amen. I think it is much deeper, amen, than that. Notice the wor- this wording. And Abel, he also brought of the firstborn of his flocks, of their fat portion. And so the word firstborn suggests that he brought the best to God. The phrase, of, uh, the fat of a portion means, speaks of he carefully prepared this for God. And so Abel carefully selected the best animal he had. He took the time to prepare the sacrifice. He brought it before the Lord, and he offered it by faith. It appears that Abel went, amen, out of his way to prepare a sacrifice that was pleasing to God. How many of us know that there's sacrifices in our lives, amen, that are pleasing to God? And there's things in our lives that are not pleasing to God. So we need to bring the, the right sacrifice to God. And so his sacrifice revealed the condition of his heart. He loved God. He honored God's word. Amen. And God accepted Abel's offering. Amen. And so his works were righteous. And Abel's faith, amen, was translated into God accepting him and declaring him righteous. Cain, on the other hand, is said to have brought the fruit of the ground. And so there is no evidence of faith. There's no evidence of preparation. Cain's offering said, I know what you said, but here is what I'm going to give you. He's telling God, take it or leave it. Cain's offering was an act of false worship that said, my way will work just as well as your way. He found out instantly that it did not work because God rejected Cain's offering. It seemed to Cain he was merely following a form. How many of us know that that God knows that we're just bringing him religion or we're bringing him our hearts or we're bringing him ourselves, amen. And so when we bring ourselves to God, it it is is always a heart of gratitude. And so God blesses that. And so in Abel, there is an acknowledgement of sin and that he needs a Savior. I'm saved today. Amen. But how many of us know that that we're all sinners under grace? And we need to know that. Amen. And we need to always come to God. Amen. And ask him to forgive us of our sins. Can neither acknowledge that he was a sinner or that he needed a Savior. Because of his lack of faith and dependence on himself, God rejected him and his offering. And so there's a warning here, amen, we need to heed. God will not accept our religion. He will not accept our works. He will not accept anything that we can attempt to do to save ourselves. The only thing God will accept, amen, is what he has already provided. He will accept nothing but faith. Cain revealed his lost condition through an unbelieving heart, and so he refused to come to God God's way. A lot of people, they want to come to God their own way. Amen. And a lot of times, God is not pleased with that. In short, he rejected the gospel of grace, and then he rejected God. Amen. Things like good works, religious deeds, a good life, a church membership, baptism will never save us. Matthew 7, 21 through 22 says this. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So this says that whoever does the will of the Father who is in heaven 
will be saved. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we did, not pro- did we not prophesy in your name and cast demons out in your name and do many mighty works in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. And so God, amen, he knows, amen, if we're real with him. He knows if we're just coming to church on Sunday and then throughout the week, we're being lawless. Let's look at the character. Ristic, amen, of an unrepented heart. And so as soon as Cain realized that his offering had been rejected by God, the Bible says his countenance fell. And so this means that his demeanor changed. And so he could not understand why God would accept Abel's offering, and ex- amen, and reject his. And so God knew what was in Cain's heart. God spoke to Cain. And ask him why he was upset. The word wrath in the New King James Version means to burn in hot anger or jealousy. God tells Cain if he did, amen, what was right, he would be accepted. I don't think God was telling Cain, amen, to bring a right sacrifice. I think he was telling him to change his heart towards God. And so God wanted Cain to repent of his attitude towards God and to walk with God in faith, humility, and submission like Abel, his brother, did. And so God is looking to produce a change in this man's heart, not just in his heart, but a change of his mind. How many of us know that God really wants to bless us? But a lot of times, you know, by what we bring God, that can change our attitudes towards God. And so God warns him that sin is like a beast crouching, ready to pounce, amen, on him. And it's lying outside his door. The beast is waiting to pounce on Cain and to devour him. If Cain will come to God God's way, then Cain can have the power over this beast. If he doesn't change and repent and honor God his way, then sin is controlling him. And we see, amen, many people that go into the house of God. They're unrepented, and so sin continuously controls their life. We know which way Cain chose. He refused to repent. He refused to love the Lord. He refused to walk, amen, in God's plan. And so sin ends up consuming his life. And so every unbeliever who has passed through this world since Cain has the same problem. They possess an unrepented heart. The lost sinner is a slave to sin and Satan. God calls the the lost to repent of their sins and to turn to him and walk in his way, in his word, amen, and in his will. And so that is the only path that leads to heaven, that we would turn, amen, from our sins, that we would turn to God. And so all other roads, amen, lead to destruction. And so if you're lost and you need to know, amen, that sin will consume you unless you turn from it and turn to God. You may think, amen, you're calling the shots in your life. You might think that you're the master of your own destiny. But the truth is very different. Sin is deceptive and it is a cruel master. It will lead you along with its pleasures and entice you with its promises. Proverbs 23, 32 says, But in the end it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. And so a lot of times we think that we have sin under control, amen, but in the long run, it'll end up biting you. And so the path of sin always leads to disillusionment, defeat, and death. The path of sin always leads away from peace, hope, and joy. And so God cannot help a man like Cain, and no one can. The person who refuses to acknowledge, amen, His spiritual condition and refuses to repent, amen, and cannot come to God and be saved. All those who are lost and remain that way are characterized 
by a repented heart. I want to take a look lastly at the characteristic of an ungodly heart. In Cain's case, as in the case of every sinner, the condition of the heart determines the course of the life. The, the beast of sin pounces on Cain and devours his heart, his conscience, and even his love for his brother. And so I want to show you how sin is manifested in this man's life. Cain murders his brother. Why did Cain kill Abel? Because he was jealous. Abel had something Cain did not have. Abel had faith in a relationship with God. And so an unbeliever always demonstrates animosity and anger towards the people of faith. The Bible says that Cain was angry, angered by God and his rejection and his offering. And so Cain's anger at God, whom he could not kill, amen, was manifested toward his brother in jealousy, who he could kill. And so Cain's hatred of God manifested in, in a hatred for his brother. The anger towards God in his heart revealed itself, amen, in him murdering his, his brother. And so God comes to Cain and asks him the whereabout of his brother Abel. This is the same thing God did when Abel, Adam and Eve fell into sin. God came to, to them and confronted them. God came to Abel, amen, confronting him also. Cain answered the Lord with a lie. He said, I do not know. And so this action indicates that the sin, amen, that was controlling this man's heart and his life. Then he answered the Lord, amen, in sarcasm. He says to, to God, he says, am I my brother's keeper? And so these are play on words. Abel is calling, or Abel is called a, sh a keeper of the sheep. And so Cain, amen, says to God, I am not his shepherd, and I am not responsible for Cain. Cain is saying to God, you love him so much, why don't you keep up with him? God tells Cain that he knows what he has done. He says that the blood of Abel cries out to him from the ground, amen, where it was shed. The blood of Abel was not silent, amen. And I want to say this morning that sin is not silent. He cried out for justice. And justice, amen, is what Cain received. So this is a fundamental biblical truth that the condition of the heart determines, determine, uh, determines the course of life. What is seen, amen, is a life externally, amen, is a revelation of the character of the heart internally. In Cain's life, sin was manifested through anger, jealousy, hatred, and murder, and lying. And so all of those actions prove that Cain possessed an unrepented heart or unredeemed heart. How many of us know that the Bible says that, that if we hate our brother, it's like we're murdering him or murdering them, amen? And so, you know, you, you see people with unrepented hearts. You see people that abhorred. Amen. Jealousy in their heart. Hatred in their heart. And it's like murdering because eventually that hatred will consume your life. And so life is always revealed through the condition of our heart. We can profess to do, we can't, pro, we can profess to do anything. But the truth of what we are is revealed in the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we think. And also the way you and I approach God. Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And so many things can come into our heart, amen. Many things can try to infiltrate our heart. And so that's why our relationship with God is so important. So this morning I want to ask, what does your life say about the condition of your heart? And so Genesis 4 through 4, 11 through 13 chronicles the rest of Cain's tragic story. 
Cain is punished by God. The ground is cursed for him. Amen. So for a farmer, this would have been devastating. God is saying, your sin has poisoned the earth against you. No matter where you go or how hard you work, the earth that swallowed your brother's blood will stand in a testimony against you. It will not honor your work with fruits. In addition to that, you will be a fugitive and a wanderer for the rest of your days. And that's what sin does to us, amen. When we abhor it in our lives and in our hearts. Cain recognized the severity of his punishment. He paid the high price for his sin. And all the days he lived in this world, he was banished from his home. He was banished from his family. He was consigned to a horrible Desperate existence. And so the name Cain appears in the Bible 20 times in 17 verses. His name appears only three times in the New Testament. And each time it appears, it is used in a negative way. Amen. The verse that stands out is John 1, 3, 12. It says, not as Cain... Who is of, of the wicked one who slew his brother? The verse tells us of the, amen, of the fate of Cain. He was of the wicked one. He is a sobering thought. Cain was the first child born into the world. He was uh, born to a parents who were obviously not perfect, but, God, but they knew God. They w had walked with God, and no doubt they taught, amen, Cain, the truth. He had a brother who knew God also, and who knew how to approach God, yet Cain was a lost man. And so this goes to show, amen, that we can even go to church and be taught about God's way and still reject him. So when you hear these characteristics, I would ask you to examine your hearts. If you see these characteristics in your life, amen, it identifies that you need to be saved. I would encourage you to believe in God, amen, and to look to Christ for salvation. Can I have every head bowed and every eye closed in respect to God, amen.